What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you um, this week's episode a little bit later than usual just because of timing issues and that sort of stuff. So I wanted to actually get this episode out just because there's a lot of content to go over, a lot of, or not a lot, but a few shows that I started watching that are now available for streaming at the same time. So I kind of wanted to also not let it back up too much. So I thought I would get it started and just get the process going so at least there's a little bit of consistency as well and not miss an episode of podcasting. So um, there is, um, or at least for this particular review, there's going to be all TV shows. And then I'll round it out with an update on some gameplay, so or the video gameplay that I have going on right now. So, um, not too much out of the ordinary. Um, as of this recording, I have not had a chance to watch Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So um, that is actually planned for not, probably not even ne- the next episode, but the week after that. So it depends if, on if I do get to watch it on the weekend of July eighth, but. Like I said, just because there's all the timing issues going on, I haven't had a chance to watch that or do much else as far as extra content that I wanted to. So with that little bit of PSA and update out of the way, um, to start off this particular week's review, I did have a chance to start my rewatch of Game of Thrones. So I, as I mentioned, I think a week or two ago, I did say that I wanted to rewatch it, see how it holds up. Now that I think we're still kind of, or we're, I think we're outside of the realm of people being disappointed in the show but still to the point where we remember that a lot of people didn't like it and then like the one episode that was super dark um things um the show ending really really fast and things like that so um so far i've gotten through season one and most of season two i think i have like three episodes left in season two um but overall game of thrones season one still holds up as probably the um, de facto um, gold standard for the show. It's up there as far as content um, overall. Um, if they had stopped there, then it kind of would have been one of those things where um, it holds. Um, it was. A, it would have been a really good show and season, like a mini series. Um, all it really would have needed to close it out is Joffrey ascending to the throne, and that's really about it. But now that we have. Um, or because we have more seasons, it's a good transition into the universe, Game of Thrones universe as a whole. Um, but it's easy to forget that a lot of stuff did happen in season one. So we have the introduction and deaths of Ned Stark and Khal Drogo. Joffrey does, I guess Joffrey becomes king kind of unofficially, but we don't really see much of his rule. Um, John joins the Night's Watch. We have his their, his first interaction with um, Tyrion and the start of their relationship. Um, we have, um, Kale- um Khaleesi, um, and all of that, st- that whole story arc with Daenerys. Um, her dragons are born, so, and then the whole thing with the comet. Um, Tyrion also meets up with Bronn, and we have the start of that relationship. So, a lot of stuff happened in the first season that's easy to forget. So, as a, um, precursor to the ending of the season, we see that a lot of that stuff is no longer there. A lot of that stuff is there, so... There's a lot of stuff that they have that they introduce in the show and then have to unravel and deal with throughout the course of the rest of the show. Um, as far as into season two overall, it's basically I think it was the Battle of the Five Kings or the War of the Five Kings or something like that. So we have the introduction of um, Renly as king, uh, Stannis is there with the Red Priestess. Um, we have. Um, a lot more stuff going on with uh, Daenerys and across the Narrow Sea, and and then of course the War of Rob wanting to go south, becoming King of the North, and then also wanting to avenge the death of Ned, and all of that. So basically, it's just a war season, basically for all of that stuff going on. And then of course, 
also in season two so far um we have of course like i said renly becoming king but then also dying with the um ghost of um stannis at killing him and then of the introduction of brienne um becoming the member of uh renly's king's guard and then also then after his death be joining up with catelyn stark so like i said there's still a lot of content going on so um so far for me the premise that because we have a lot of the stuff going on in the beginning of the season and then ultimately winding down because you know the with the war of the five kings a lot of those guys end up dying uh joffrey ends up dying kind of being replaced with um Ram i think it's ramsey bolton the son the bastard son of, i think roos bolton and all of that so and then we have you know um rob dying uh john going north being with the free folk and all of that stuff um uh, what's his name? Um, Tywin Lannister dying and all of that. So a lot of stuff happens and changes. So I think with less story arcs by the end of the season, it does feel like the show is a lot faster, even though by the time we get into the last three seasons, there's a lot fewer characters, a lot fewer stories. So it makes sense that it would feel like it's a faster show. So um, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. So like I said, I still have a couple of episodes to go in season two, but once I you know catch up on all the other week to week shows, I, I'm pushing through that as Game of Thrones as well. Um, next up, I did have a chance to watch The Walking Dead: Dead City. So this is season one, episode two. Who's there? Um, this continues in the trend of the last episode as being a really well written episode where we have a lot more interactions with Negan and um, uh, Maggie. But we actually, we also get Negan getting to uh, pull out a little bit more of his old Negan. Um, we the pivotal points in the show are twofold. The first is a conversation that Negan and Maggie have that Negan explains to Maggie that he didn't want to have to do what he did, and he only pulled out that persona that he saw with them when he had to. But the curl out was actually a fringe element and wanted Negan to actually do more, but he was holding back quite a bit. That act was only to keep, he only pulled that out when he needed to teach people a lesson. So if someone steals from him, then he had to teach him a lesson. And that's why he did what he did because they were basically was trying to say that Maggie and Rick and all of them were messing up the sanctuary and everything that he had set up as a um, bit of normal society, normal for him, granted. But essentially that was just a persona he was taking when he was alone or not having to do that. Then he was not that person who they all thought he was he was just a night right he was basically you know just another rick kind of where um so i guess it's like the underlying current there is that um he was basically him and rick are the same they pull out this bad persona when they need to but they put it away when it's no longer needed and this actually he or this point is proven when that we come face to face with some of those um motorcycle helmet guys uh, and negus negan starts smashing in the window with one of their guys and um while he doesn't whistle he actually does um give them an ultimatum to tell them that if they don't leave them alone he's gonna do a lot more and worse back to them so um i actually like this switch that he turns off and on maggie sees him do this so she the scene i guess we're supposed to see when we see maggie's reaction is that she now understands what he was doing and that it doesn't necessarily mean that Negan was trying to put her to shame that uh, what they did was wrong at the time, but he was trying to prove the point that he, that everyone is like that and that he just had that ability to turn that switch on and off and that's what he was doing. So um, maybe he did take it too far with um, um, Glenn and what's his, the redhead dude, but it wasn't anything personal he was trying to teach a lesson and that's kind of what that whole thing was about so i really liked this episode in its entirety because of those two scenes um next up i did also have a chance to watch marvel's secret invasion so this is season one episode two promises so in general it's also it's still dealing with the aftermath of the first episode um, I'm gonna have to rewatch the first episode because I guess Maria Hill died and I totally missed it but we started with a funeral of her so definitely a sad moment but the pivotal scene here is the meeting and conversation that we have between Nick Fury and um um what's his name uh, Rhodey 
not to mention the ending scene, which I'll get to in a second. But we have their conversation about um, Nick Fury wanting to say that, and Rhodey summed it up best, that the, scr the Skrull invasion can only be handled by Nick, and uh, they have to put all their faith in him. And Rhodey says the opposite, that why that he's, no, he's not um, asking for permission, he's not going to do that, and... Why do they have to go down that road? Like, why does why are they the only ones who can do that sort of thing? So, overall, this conversation was very intriguing, pivotal. It was almost like a not necessarily like Law and Order or a CSI conversation, but in the middle of a TV series, this was you know movie high grade level um, conversation to me. So I really liked it, and it drove home the fact that by the end of the episode, we learned that. Um, Nick Fury in this case is actually a scroll, so I'm curious to find out what happened. I forget if Nick actually is, has died in the canon of all these films and TV shows, or if they are pu pushing the scroll or the scroll is taking the face of Nick Fury to push their war, get what they need, but also if Nick is still on board that space, space station for Saber and they're, the scroll are taking advantage of, of him being there and, and not actually being able to defend himself. So I kind of want to see more because of that. Otherwise, it was an okay episode. Um, not more near the level of what I thought for The Walking Dead, but it's still an interesting premise and it makes me want to see the rest of the show to kind of see what the aftermath of all of this is and the reason for the scroll posing as Nick Fury. Um, next up, and this is, was an unexpected um, show to start watching, but we have the start for the Jack Ryan TV series, season four, the final season for the show, which I didn't even, or I think I might have seen it a couple of months ago or whatever, the trailer like a month or two ago, and I totally forgot. But I saw the pop up in the Amazon Prime video app, and I was like, okay, great, of course I'm going to watch it. I love the first three seasons. So I did start it. We have most of the episode really dealing with the. Um, ascension to Jack Ryan and that lady as the heads of the CIA, the confirmation hearings, um, defending the actions that happened in the last season. So overall, I like the show. I haven't had a chance to watch the second episode, which is also available for streaming at the moment. But um, I am going to catch up on that and watch them as they come out as I can. But Overall, a good start to the show. I can't wait to see what they do for the over the course of this particular season. But um, in general, it was a good start. Basically, like I said, it's all about the confirmation hearings um, and dealing with the aftermath of the last season. So um, there's that. And then, um, and then now I'm drawing a blank on what the bad guys are up to. But um, in general, it looks so. Yeah, it's hard to say where they're gonna go with this, but. Uh, once I watch the second episode, I hope to have a better, clearer thought process of what I hope to see or what I'm expecting is going to happen in this season. So with that being said, um, if you follow me on my YouTube channel, then you will have seen that I have started my replay for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. In this case, it's the female Mace Windu, Mace Windu character, which, you know, a strong soldier, strong force user. And I'm going to and run with it to see how the story holds up, also to get the card storyline. So now that I'm off of Terrace, um, I finished all the Dan Dantooine missions. So now that we have the whole scope of the game as far as finding the star maps, getting to the star fort, and um, dealing with Revan, or sorry, with Malik, um, I have taken taken care of the Yavin Station portion of the game. So go to the Yavin Station, play Pasak with the Rodian enough times so that he gives you a discount on all his goods. Um, so I will say, of course, I'm playing with the caveat that I'm playing with the easy Pazak mod. So the main thing there is that um, I didn't want to spend, you know, two hours trying to defeat him enough times to get the discount. So that's kind of the reasoning for that. Just um, push through it, defeat him enough times. I think I only lost maybe once, but still, regardless, I wanted. And then also, it's a good opportunity, regardless of how you play. But if you beat them enough times, the main purpose is to, or the secondary purpose is to get a whole bunch of credits as well. So by wagering that 750 credits each time, you build bulk up on that, and then you sell him all your goods, so you get even more credits. Um, and then, of course, the next thing to do once you do that is head to Tatooine. Um, one of the main reasons for that, for that is to take care of the Bastila and Mission Veo story arcs. 
which in this case was weird that I wasn't able to engage the mission story arc with her brother. I don't know why, and I think I remember there being a glitch with that story arc starting. I'm not sure why, but I'm kind of hoping that I still see her brother there as being alive, or if um, at some point if I take her out, take her with me on some missions that it does engage the mission because or does engage all of that so I can finish it, but um, I was able to start the Basilisk story arc, so if you head to another planet like Kashi, then um, you'll be introduced to a lady who says that she recognizes Basila from an old photo that her mother has. So when you go to the cantina on Tatooine, you can meet up with Bas Basila's mom, and then you get a side quest to find the data pad that her husband, Basila's dad, was carrying around. and. You can go one of two routes. I don't remember if there's any light side or dark side points, but essentially you can have Vastila tell her, mon or tell her mom to screw off because she always manipulated them all this time and hates her. Or you can kind of go the light side route and have Vastila forgive her mom, believe her, and let her have some peace. So either way, I was able to get that started. Um, as far as the Mission Veo story arc, um, I don't remember if there is a way to still interact with Mission's brother in the Sand People Enclave. I could swear that there is a way to, that that can still happen if you, you know, once Mission Veo, Mission levels up one more time, or you can progress the story arc a little bit further. Um, because you basically you need to have um, met Lena um, missions or mission. I think her brother's name is Griff, so Griff's girlfriend. Once that engages at one of the starports, then you can um, continue the story arc with Griff and take care of all that, give him the credits, and believe him, not believe him, whatever you want. But um, essentially, that Lena, much like Basila's mom with the lady that you meet in a starport, you have to have met Lena's Lena at some starport or some walkway in order to have start to start the uh, mission story arc with her brother. So, if I'm able to see him in the Sand People Enclave and progress the story that way without doing that, then I'll do that. But um, so far, I, that's kind of on the side. If I don't get to do that, then oh well, whatever. It's not you know make or break for the game. It's not extra XP for the character, and that's about it. Um, on a related note, though, because I am on Tatooine, I have um, bought HK47, so we're all good there. I just have to make sure I got the uh, note that you have to take. If you take HK47 with you to the Sand People Enclave, then you can translate what they're saying, speak to the chieftain, and um, essentially stop the violence without any violence and having to kill all the sand people as long as you honor the code. So kind of what we saw in The Mandalorian, where um, you can kind of do a light-sided thing there. But same thing with the Bastila mission with for her dad and her mom. I don't remember if you get light or dark side points in either direction, but essentially all you want is the sand people chieftains um, helmet or his gaffy stick or something to make Zerka happy and finish that story arc and get the credits for it. Um, and then you can get some gaffy sticks when you traverse the desert you know, for Tatooine, but um, essentially I'm gonna try to get that, go down that road if I can with HK47 and do the light side of thing and make the piece. Um, but because it doesn't matter, I, I'm not gonna, you know, lose sleep over it. Um, if I have to, you know, defeat them all to get the Gaffy Stick or the Chieftain Gaffy Stick, then fine. But I'm going to try to do the light sided thing. Um, and then I think I, at some point I did buy um, Bantha Fodder. So I think I can start with the star map at the moment. But I think I also have to get the um, uh, map that's on the... Um, Sand people enclave, like one of the side, one of like the dead people on in that on that side of the desert for the sand people has the map to navigate the dune sea. So, either way, that's the next part of the game. I've so far I've done taking care of all that side stuff as much as I can in Anchorhead. So, um, if you're following, if you're not a subscriber on the YouTube channel, then yeah, make sure you are so you can keep track of that stuff if you want to follow along with my gameplay. So that is all for this particular episode. So if you have any uh, questions, comments, feedback um, on this episode or anything like that, you can find all the links to the social media sites that I'm on. 
at Headphones Neil Reviews, which also has a link to the YouTube channel. But if you want to get there directly, it's youtube.com slash PatelN01. Um, of course, the website also has links to support the show. But if you want ad-free content, um, early acts, early content of the po- um, podcast episode and ad-free version of the show as well, then to be sure to support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. Um, in this particular case, because I was late in um, releasing the episode, um, I'll probably release it all at the same time. But the extra benefit still is that if you're a, a patron, a supporter on the Patreon site, then you will get an ad-free version of the show. So um, definitely stay for that. And of course, I welcome your subscription on YouTube, um, where you can get the video version, version of the show. Um, gameplay videos for whatever gameplay or video game i'm playing at the moment um, i'm starting to do a little bit more content as far as youtube shorts to kind of play around with that um, i found a particularly good use for the google photo cinematic video to turn you know a photo into a 3d or that kind of 3d effect video picture video i guess so those are com- actually nicely compatible with youtube shorts so um, I've been kind of putting those up with my Knights of the Old Republic gameplay, just a quick screenshot of random things in the game. So um, definitely if you like those, give, us a, give a thumbs up. If you want to be see more of those, definitely let me know. Or if you want to see different things of things like that um, on the channel, then also let me know in the comments on the videos or on social media. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.